Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So, you know, one segment I'm trying to move into 2024 because there's a lot of things that, you know, we got coming up for 2024 is the reactions in the comments, man. Some of the conversation, best conversations I've ever had in rugby uh, has happened whenever it's in the comments for the YouTube channel. Um, you know, if you hit me in the DMs uh, and obviously with TikTok and all the thing, you can hit me literally everywhere. I, <laughs> you can get me almost anywhere. So, uh, I really enjoy these conversations. I wanted to bring some of them up uh, publicly because uh, they're just that legit. They're, they're just that legit. So uh, let's get it all started. So first one uh, comes from uh, my guy, uh, Neil392. Uh, he talked about, yo, what about Joe Yap's appointment as Wallaroo's coach? Interestingly, she appeared on today's The Good, The Skays, and The Rugby film just before the announcement. So this was in response to uh, the video I put, a clip I put about Eddie Jones being named head coach for Japan. So, you know, Neil, like when it comes to Joe Yap, honestly, at the time, I didn't really know that much about her. Um in, in this moment, I'm just kind of like, yo, that's that's legit. Like, I, I don't have I don't have any feelings about it anyway. I think that's awesome that she went from War Sister Warriors and that she's now been able to go and take over the Wallaroos. I know that 15 side has been pretty good. They were actually pretty good in the WXV1, and uh, they've been kind of on the rise. I think they've been, again, playing a lot between their 15th and 7th players trying to figure out who's where and bringing them to, to each side. But I think she's going to bring a lot of consistency, especially for the 2025 Rugby World Cup, which is where they're going to really need a show out. I think those women are basically the last dying hope for the rugby union um, for uh, Australia <laughs> at this point. So, um, you know, I, I, I do believe that it's, it's a great hire. Um, I think she's going to bring a lot of dynamicism. I don't know why I can't say this word. But I, it, it's a good hire. It's a legitimate, legitimately good hire. So shout out to them on that one. Um, next up, uh, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> my God, Jason Bray Ultra Sports says, uh, "Don't go away, mad Eddie. Just go away." Responding again to Eddie Jones being named head coach for Japan. Uh, my boy Jason, he part of the Singapore to Tokyo ride. Uh, definitely has shown his uh, uh, spite. Might be an understatement. For Eddie Jones, uh, this, he's an Australian, you know, keep it. He's a rugby league fan that, that goes with it. Um, the Women's Rugby World, uh, in response to the Women's Rugby World Cup 2025 venue announcements, uh, G. Cromer 903 is like, excellent, can't wait. I, I, I'm the same, looking forward to what 27, 2025 has to offer. Um, in response to the NRL promos on the NFL, Jason Bray Ultra Sports goes, Campbell Graham and Aaron Woods, what the hell? Go Broncos. Again, responding to the two guys uh, that were doing the promotion for the NRL's uh, March 2nd Las Vegas uh, uh, showcase. Uh, again, should be interesting. I've heard a lot of like pushback, especially with Aaron Woods. Like, I guess he has some controversy behind them, but you know, they, you do what you do and you use what you got, man. Uh, big shout out to Jack Palm Beach, Florida, Jack underscore Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, he kind of responded to, uh, uh, the, uh, episode rugby New York has fallen Dubai sevens review. Uh, so he was saying, cause I obviously had made a lot of criticism about, uh, MLR, the trouble that they're in and obviously what they are, uh, what they can do to be able to help themselves. So Jack underscore Palm Beach, Florida goes, uh, we can keep trying. If professional rugby peters out in the U.S., who cares? The loss, uh, there will always be college and university rugby, which I really enjoy. Um, and, and then he followed it up with, uh, I agree, uh, agree. Rugby needs more time at the college and university levels before going pro in order to build a fan base. Good comparison to McDonald's because I utilize the idea of uh, McDonald's and needing to use real estate. Uh, I will say this. I do think that there is an absolute need to be able to have a professional. And I think that if the professional rugby league does peter out from the hardcore fan base side, of course, I think 100% will stay in. Amateur clubs will still be able to play. People will enjoy. But I do think that it impacts the generational mobility. And I do think it's almost feels like an incomplete journey to some extent. I, I you know, I, there's 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 satisfaction, there's ambition, and I think you need to find somewhere in the balance between the two of those. If you're not finding that, it makes it really difficult for bringing in new players, especially when it comes to like hitting. Like it's not the same generation as it was before. A lot of people now have more 
um, awareness about things like, especially in the U.S., lack of health insurance, um, you know, uh, worries about uh, medical problems that can exist that can happen later on. So uh, the stakes and the value have to play into what the turnover is. And, you know, a, a, if you get too old of a sport, um, it, it can kind of lose its its glisten. Uh, while it's great for stories, great for amateurs, lasting a long time, you do have to change with the times. Um, and then, uh, you said, uh, also for all their love of sport, 99.9% 9 .9 of Americans experience with American football in this touch flag or throwing a football at a park or the beach. Most is watching it and getting drunk, uh, followed up by for now and the foreseeable future, Americans won't embrace professional rugby as the world will never embrace American football at any level. It's a one country sport. I'm an American who prefers rugby. So I, I think there's validity. I think on one hand, I, I think the number is probably closer to like 90, 80%, 90, 85, maybe 70%, something like that, who will never play uh, American football. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's maybe closer to like 95% that may never play American football overall. Um, and you're right. Most people are watching it or experiencing it so that's where he's responding again in terms of being able to build the viewership you need those casual viewers and it kind of goes back to the original point that you were saying that i was saying about not having the professional league uh casual viewers are very difficult to bring along if you're not doing anything to add stakes to it from the college side it's nice but the college side gets bolstered because you get to see those kids develop into the professional side and then see them as grow up, grown ups. It's like you're you're raising along. Those are your your either your your uh, inspirations, your contemporaries, or uh, your stories that you're 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 going against. So you want to be able to have that raise, and that's where that casual viewership also comes in in building the loyalty, even if they're not a participating side. As far as American football. Being a one country sport, man, honestly, dude, look at the NFL. The NFL is starting to make its rise. I will say Germany is a much bigger football playing sport than people really realize. They, I mean, we knew them from NFL Europe, um, but we've seen the NFL do their games, I think, in Hamburg last year. They're going to be doing it in Berlin next year like that. They had crowds. They've done it in Twickenham Stadium in London multiple, multiple times and have gotten their 60, 70 50,000 uh, full stadium crowds for those games. And those are some of our worst competitions, uh, worst teams that they're playing. They're improving. Um, uh, obviously, now uh, next year, the NFL is going into um, going into Brazil. They've done it in Mexico. They'll be going to Spain. And the reason I'm saying this is that uh, even though it seems like as of now, you know, NFL has been able to eat off of the American public because one, the U.S. has the largest economy Two, most of the biggest money players in television reside out of the U.S. And so those TV contracts have been absolutely pivotal to the uh, NFL success. And obviously, college rugby has its impetus. But the real game that the NFL has played that has taking the world no matter how many people complain about how long it is, how many commercials it is, it's overrated, it's underrated, we like it, we don't, yada, yada, is that there is a perception to the name NFL. It is the richest sport in the league. Soccer, Premiership Rugby, um, you know, La Liga, all that might be the most watched, but having the title of the most glisten play something. And for us as rugby people, we want to be able to work into that range of being able to be like, yo, what do we need to do to increase our glisten? Um, we need to be able, we have the international range like soccer does, but we don't have the monetary backing like soccer does. So we need to do things that allow us to be able to bring players through and increase the value proposition for others. And it's not just money, but those two things create risk or re rewards where Amateurism just cannot simply sustain that over a period of time. But even though most people will be amateurs and never will get to the professional level, but there always needs to be that glisten of hope, that maybe possibility. We know some of the best stories come from the people who say, man, if I hadn't blown out my knee in high school or in college, I could have been going into the league or yada, yada. Even if you know they didn't have a dead man's chance 
of getting into the league. Like they, they were never going to, but all these things add to the story and the lore that goes along with it. And in the end, sports and entertainment is a lore game. It's a lore and story game. And that's where we want to build. We want to build our heroes. Where's our next Achilles? Where is our uh, Mansa Munso? Where is our, our, you know, you know, Schwarzenegger, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. <laughs> um, Rit, uh, Rit the Rugger 160, man. One of my guys been a constant. Thank you so much. Uh, Rit the Rugger goes, as an American, I feel no need to watch games live. It's easy to avoid knowing who won a match before viewing it. To me, even if it was played yesterday or last week, that's blessed ignorance. That blessed ignorance is bliss. Hell, when I was a Denver Broncos season ticket holder, the Elway years, when they were on the road, I would play golf. Uh, courses were pretty empty. Ride home with no radio. Watch the recorded game with the luxury of fast forwarding through the commercials. Heaven. I do agree, though, that watching live is nice if you don't have to get up. Uh, hours before the sun comes up. It's in response to the Women's Rugby World Cup 2025 venue announcement. Of course, where I said that I do feel like this 2025 Rugby World Cup will actually be the best, uh, most popular and most watched rugby world, Women's Rugby World Cup in comparison to the 2017 uh, Rugby World Cup as opposed to the 2020, uh, 2022 uh, New Zealand, uh, 2021 New Zealand Rugby World Cup, which I don't think uh, should have been as lauded as, as it really was. Um, you know, I, I do agree that you don't need to watch the games, but I also feel like that's also the problem that has to be solved. Uh, if there's no state, the reason why it makes no sense to not watch the games is because there's no story behind it. Like if you don't have a story, there's no reason for you to look for the climax. Um, so I, I do think that that actually plays a factor and you speak to a very big problem that comes in to why we have difficulty in building up casual fan bases, because what are the stakes, you know, outside of winning a trophy that, you know, whether or not you have a chance to do it or not, like, if you don't feel like you have a chance, why are you going to go watch it? You might do it for the love of the game, but the love of the game makes you a passing player. How do you get them into being storied? into a hard nose and being like, I need to go see must see TV. And Rick, you remember this, like me back in the early, the nineties and obviously the, uh, the, the two thousands where, you know, we had, uh, appointment television at its best and people would go do it. And, 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 you know, even if you're like trying to ignore it, where in that time, the nineties, the Elway years and the eighties, you know, obviously you had specific sources that you had to go around. So, radio and television and word of mouth. This is it. But uh, now we have so many more. Twitter, X will get it. It'll hit on Facebook. Uh, freaking knockout over here. So the only reason to know the results and know it well is because the story makes sense. So I think you speak literally to the problem that there is no great stories that are making you say, I need to go watch this outside of, I just like rugby and I like to support my people, which is still good, but you know, it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same. Um, USA Rugby League union fan uh, goes, um, followed NRL for eight years, uh, got into both rugby codes at the same time, love both. I'll be in Vegas for this. It's an amazing competition. So fast. Ball and play time is insane. This is in response to the NRL promos on the NFL um, clips that I put out. Uh, and we got one more. All right. Uh, Last two, we got Neil392. Uh, the Safa's move from Super Rugby is driven by two things, money and geography. There's simply, there is simply for more money in Europe. The TV contracts are bigger because there's a bigger audience. Secondly, the north-south commuting is cheaper and easier than east-west. Uh, this is in response to the reactions to story comments that I, I put up. And uh, – I, I, I agree, but as it was said to what you were talking about, when it comes to the crowds, yes, there is more of an audience in terms of total range uh, in, in Europe, simply because everybody's a little bit more constricted. But I would argue that those TV contracts actually also needed South Africa because of the fact that there is more dynamic rugby and you probably have also what you even spoke about going into the pubs um, that will watch the game. Because the name of the game for these contracts are what is the range? And then subsequently, 
how much can we sell these ad, this spacing in the games for ads, right? And that's where they make their revenue. Uh, they're now outside of cable, but most of this is free to air. So they're making their money from licensing or they're making their money from ads. So in terms of licensing, South Africa does have something to provide, but it also means the factor that you need to cultivate that consistency, loyalty, and you need to have a presentation that makes people want to be able to sit in front of their TV, computers, telephones, et cetera, and be able to want to do it. And then, of course, like, like you said, the north-south commute is significantly different. It's, it's, it's an eight-hour trip, but it's definitely time zone far more relevant and definitely way cheaper. Uh, and if you guys know plane routes, planes do not like going over ocean. They want as little ocean as feasibly possible. And going South Africa to New Zealand, South Africa to Australia is definitely not the commute that uh, is is price friendly at all. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it, it absolutely is both. Um, but you do that money plays for the growth. And the last one that we have is with Hottie Toddy Channel, uh, who asked, who was the first Latin American team? Uh, this was the MLR going to Mexico video. Uh, whenever I announced, talked about the announcement for Major League Rugby going to Mexico as a rumor, and I said it's like it'll be basically like the second Latin American team. First one is Miami Sharks. Miami Sharks is almost is Argentinian run, Argentinian GM, Ar Argentinian coach, majority prominently Argentinian players, Argentinian owner, like in a Latin American city like in the U.S., like one of the most Latin American cities in the U.S. Um, so that's where I was. Tongue-in-cheek, of course, but, I mean, to some extent, it's 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 not a lie. <laughs> it's not a lie. Uh, so...